Ice Cab. Coronavirus has me day drinking. I want you to leave that in there too. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Hi, folks. It's E. Chip and Robber. And um, just a quick video uh, something that I've been following a little bit and uh, is on my mind. I generally don't get, you know, caught up. <laughs> I generally don't get caught. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I generally don't get caught up in these kinds of things, but I have been following this and I just uh, thought I'd share some thoughts on this. Um, you've heard about this coronavirus that's spreading through China, it's in the news. Uh, I just checked online and the latest numbers uh, show almost 1,500 people uh, in China affected by this. China's claimed that they've uh, quarantined 56 million people in the Hubei province. Uh, several cities have, are on lockdown. I don't even know if that's possible. I suspect not. Um, but uh, they're saying that, you know, they're estimating that this virus is going to spread very quickly. Um, it's a connective tissue disease. Um, like a lot of flus and, you know, viruses that affect the uh, respiratory system are. And... Uh, of course, since it's a virus, there's no antiviral medication for it. Um, it's not bacterial, so they couldn't give you an antibiotic. It's just one of those things you have to deal with. But, um, <clears throat> you know, people are comparing it to the Spanish flu outbreak of 1918. And I think the reason for that is, is because estimates are that, and I'm just going by U.S. numbers, in the United States, the population of the United States in 1918, I think, was... Uh, uh, 107 or 6 100 and 130 million or something like that people um, now of course in the United States 350 million um, the percentage of people in the United States in 1918 who came down with Spanish flu was flu was 28 percent and they are predicting something similar uh, for this coronavirus um, if if the coronavirus were to make it, you know, to the U.S. and become widespread. And if the infection rate were similar to the Spanish flu from 1918 of 28% of the population, <clears throat> and if the mortality rate was the same among those infected at about, it was Spanish flu was about 2%. Um, right now, they're estimating with the coronavirus about 3% mortality. Then you are looking at a pandemic or something like that on the same scale or maybe just a little bit worse than the Spanish flu. So, well, numerically and statistically it would be considerably worse number-wise because we have so many more people. Right, it'd be a lot more people infected, yeah. But then adjusted for time and number, maybe it may be very similar, I mm -hmm. don't know. Well, I mean, if if the scale is remains the same. Population back then was 130 million mm -hmm. um, and 675,000 people died from Spanish flu, Americans. Um, today, if that same scale held up uh, and it behaved the same way, uh, about 1.3 million people would die uh, from coronavirus if it hit the U.S. Here's the thing with me. Um, I get the flu every year. I generally don't get flu shots. Um, I don't like them. I don't believe in them. I think that from a population genetic standpoint, they're a bad idea. It's a great way to weaken a herd, uh, you know, using the, um, the CDC's terminology. Um, they're a bad idea. Uh, inoculate, inoculating whole populations against flu is, does not make the population stronger. Uh, you know, actually going through the flu, toughing it out, and, you know, sad to say, but those people who don't make it, don't make it, um, is, a, is a much stronger way to inoculate a population. Well, of course, I wonder, I would be curious to know how many to people today, if we're talking about flu viruses and flu vaccines, how many people who have been vaccinated end up dying from the flu? Because you know it has to happen. Sure. Considering they always warn against elderly and young sure. people. Sure. You know, er, if I'm around a lot of people this time of year, I get flu. It starts out in my sinuses and it eventually winds up in my lungs. And right now, <coughs> <coughs> oh, 
I have a chest infection from flu. And I, some years it's, it gets so bad where I can't control it. I ha actually have to use a nebulizer like I'm doing now and albuterol to control it because it kicks off an exercise induced asthma uh, and a little bit of, you know, a touch of pneumonia. So, uh, you know, right now I'm trying to control the side effects of flu that I got weeks ago. Um, so for me, if I, if coronavirus were to make it here, um, and were to become, you know, an incident uh, in the same way they think it may be in China, uh, I would head straight to contentment where it's more isolated and I wouldn't have to, you know, deal with people, at least for a while, um, because obviously I'm susceptible to this kind of thing. I'm not really afraid of it. You know, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So I think I would take the precaution and just head to contentment until it blows over. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. What are your thoughts, Roland? Um, you don't care. No, if you really want my, here's the truth. <coughs> I don't worry about it. Yeah. At all. Yeah, and we don't, think you, we don't think you should either. I mean, you know, take the precautions, keep your hands clean. Don't share keyboards. Well, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, there are certain things out of your control. You know, you don't obviously want to put yourself into direct, oh, that person has coronavirus. I'm going to mm -hmm. go, you know, sit next to them or something right. like that. But yeah. I don't worry about stuff like this. Yeah. And, you know, in normal, healthy populations, um, you know, these kinds of things, yeah, they go through, they do some damage, but... Um, uh, they are what they are. Maybe I should be concerned because I'm an elderly person now <laughs> since I turned 50. Right. So I should probably be concerned. I'm not telling you how old I am. He's older. He's like 74. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But now that I'm an old woman, an elderly, official, a sen officially like senior citizen, I guess, according to a TV and everything I see, I should be concerned. So anyway, folks... Thanks for watching. Uh, this is really just sort of a message to encourage you not to worry. Um, just take the normal precautions you would. If it's coming, it's coming. Uh, but also uh, take this opportunity to talk a little bit about an upcoming video that we've got. We've been talking with George Cox over at Iridium 242, a uh, very well-known prepper uh, channel on YouTube. And uh, we've been talking about doing a collaboration because we've got a med kit that we want to show him and get his opinion on it and see how we might be able to improve on it. So this is just sort of a way to, you know, uh, to introduce that. And we hope you'll stay tuned. I know we need a suture kit. We don't yeah, have we one. Yeah, we need a suture kit. But anyway. Okay. Thanks, folks. Take care. Bye.